All right, folks, Wednesday afternoon here in West Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. So hopefully we're going to get some people on board real soon, and then we're going to get to the topic at hand. And uh, just going to do a little bit. Obviously, you see the uh, topic, subject matter there, whole food, plant-based diet or militant veganism, some interesting stuff we're going to talk about uh, here. So hopefully uh, once people jump on board, uh, we're going to get to that so uh, also a little house cleaning next week's uh next week's um webinar is going to be all about uh, revisiting the aerobic myth a uh, few people at my gym finally taking notice of certain things and uh, so we said yeah sure i'll cover that again next week i've done it a few times but it's one of those topics i think even if i do the same lecture and revisit it uh, a few times uh, it seems to make sense because um the same mistake keeps being made year in, year out. So uh, it just uh, makes sense to keep revisiting it. It's it's a shame to see people making the same mistakes over and over again, especially under the guise of expertise. Uh, so just while we're waiting for people to climb on board, hopefully um, people here out in the Western vicinities can still get to it in the middle of a work day. And then we're gonna get to uh, the subject matter at hand. So. Um, we're just going to wait for a few things to pick up. One of the things I noticed today in the gym, a couple young lads were uh, squatting in the leg room right in front of me and uh, working their way up. And it was funny because they were not squatting deep enough. So their squats were really high and they were loading up the weight and stuff. But it was amazing that after the sets, there's no look on their face or watching them that even indicates that they're gauging biofeedback. And what do I mean by that? I mean, even if you're going heavy for low reps, there should be some kind of physiological cue from your body that it has performed quote unquote work. There should be some kind of physiological feedback where you need to gauge from your body that it's just done something that um, demands an adoptive response. So it was amazing to watch these guys, you know, do supposedly full squats with a barbell, rack the weight, not be, not be out of breath at all, uh, resume talking to each other, and then do another set. Uh, it's amazing that biofeedback is just sort of lost in all this, and then watch them go over to the leg press, and of course, um, lay back on the leg press like I've seen so many times, phone in hand scrolling through their phone and then executing a set. How are you mentally prepared to do that? How are you serious about what you're doing uh, when that's your mindset? I'll just scroll through my phone and then, oh, I'm ready to do a set. That, I mean, just observations at the gym today that make no sense to me. I thought I'd share that with you, but we're gonna get on to the uh, uh, subject at hand. And of course I got my buddy, uh, Andy. So we're just gonna, uh, bring Andy into the conversation, and then we're gonna talk about uh, militant uh, veganism. Are you there, buddy? I think everyone can see you. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we're all good. All right. so Excellent. I, I can hear you and see you, and uh, you know, That's always making, good. <laughs> making me look bad as usual. So um, one of the things I wanted to get to, and you and I have had this conversation, as a matter of fact, um, you know, the springboard to this topic came out of Andy and I getting together last week for coffee and then for dinner and and uh, Andy basically was saying that's an episode so that's what we uh we decided to make I was um way back when when I did the webinar on breaking vegan uh people were interested in it but then I started getting all kinds of comments and email from people strange to me at least uh, people were asking me things like what kind of um, laundry soap I use and am I, uh, what kind of toothpaste am I using? And if I'm not doing that, then I shouldn't call myself a vegan. And how can you call yourself a vegan if you're talking about a six day diet where the seventh day is, is whatever you want. So, um, and then, I mean, some of them just got more ridiculous from there. Some of them got more outrageous from there. Some of them were halfway in between. But I tell you, I'm not sure if you can see the book Modern Nutrition and Health and Disease behind me, um, the encyclopedia uh, text on nutrition. But um, it doesn't define vegan in those terms. It defines vegan the way I define vegan, which is a description of your diet and or your diet strategy. So that's the kind of thing uh, we're gonna get into in today's uh, PowerPoint presentation. Any comments, buddy, before I move on? 
Yeah, I, I, I kind of dealt with the same thing too. People, you know, oh, you're not a vegan because you don't, you know, you, you still include some animal products on a on a cheat day. Well, it wasn't really what I was going for anyways. I mean, um, once you label me, you negate me, right? So, yeah. And uh, we're going to... Yeah, Go people are more concerned with, with labels and actual context and, and substance, right? So it, it's just... It's a little ridiculous. Yeah, and and you know, I mean, if I wanted to get explicit, some of the people writing me obviously don't even know the the main elements of vegetarianism. So, um, and, Andy, turn down your mic a little bit. Um, you're a little loud. Um, and you know, I, I could have said before I was more lacto ovo vegetarian, or I was this, or I was that. We're going to get into that, but the comments from people actually like. Uh, taking offense or whatever made you know, made no sense. So, uh, I'm going to bring the PowerPoint into the uh, into the program now, and uh, hopefully you guys can all see that. Um, is that loud? Can you guys read that? Hopefully you guys can read that, um, and I'll make it a little bit bigger, and uh, or I can make Andy and I a little bit uh, smaller. Uh, how can I do that? Um, that's not going to work. Let me just play with this, folks, and see what you can. There, how's that? Can you guys read that? Give me uh, some thumbs up or some comments if you guys can read that. doesn't really matter if you can, but Andy and I are going to comment on it. So hopefully you can follow along. And so with the kind of comments that we were receiving, uh, both of us actually, I thought, you know what, I want to lay this, um, want to lay this down in terms of my approach to what we're talking about here versus uh, other people online approach to sort of an identity or an identity crisis or all the rest of it. So the plant-based diet versus militant veganism in terms of the feedback we've got since uh, my webinar, Breaking Vegan, way back. So I looked up the definition of militant and the definition definition is a combative and, ag and aggressive in support of a political or social cause and typically favoring extreme, violent, or confrontational methods. And I thought, yeah, that about sums it up. The people that I were encountering who were um, militant in their uh, notion of what vegan actually means. And when you turn something into an ism, you tend to turn it into an ideology or belief system to defend. That is not what Andy and I talk about when we talk about breaking vegan. We talk about describing a diet and a diet undertaking and a diet strategy. We are not talking about a political or social cause um, and especially one that would uh, require confrontational methods. So uh, you want to add something there, bud, and then I'll move on. Yeah, to the I find a lot of people, it ends up being more of a, a case of uh, spiritual pride for them. Like, like they, they'd like to be able to, uh, you know, to pat themselves on the back and congratulate themselves for what they feel is, is the right thing to do. It has, you know, not much to do with, with living a healthy, sustainable lifestyle. It's, it, it's, more or less giving them uh, an identity, you know, almost like a purpose for their life, right? So, um, and that's, and the, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's where the militant thing comes in, right? Yeah. A political or social cause that favors confrontational extreme methods. Uh, you know, one of the things we said from the get-go that I don't think people actually heard when we said it was, you know, we're not going to start holding hands, skipping through the tulips and hugging trees. That wasn't ever like what we were talking about when yeah. we talked about breaking vegan. Um, you know, we, uh, so when people started telling me, you know, I got to look at, you know, my laundry detergent and I got to learn to, you know, all these other things, uh, my toothpaste even, or I can't call myself vegan. And then people, you know, wanting to sell us uh, T-shirts and, and things like that. So, um, you know, it, it when you turn something descriptive uh, into an identity, then you tend to add that ism into it. Now, I've written about this in the past. I wrote a blog called Nutritionism. I wrote a blog called Scientism, uh, where you start hiding behind terms like nutrition, like science, in order to create 
a belief system where you create a tribal men mentality of us versus them. Um, you can go to my uh, my blog archives and read uh, my um, my blog, my article on nutritionism and scientism in the fitness industry. And it's the same thing here. Once you add that ism to the word vegan, then we're not talking about the same things. And as as a nutritionist and as a physique transformation uh, coach, I wanted to be clear about I don't have the ism attached to us breaking vegan. You didn't see the webinar that, that we did called Breaking Vegan. It didn't say breaking veganism. It didn't say breaking into, you know, uh, a new identity. It was strictly about our diet. So now the reason that change happened uh, was because if I'm going to be accurate in advocating a certain position as a nutritionist, as a physique transformation specialist, as an expert in this for four decades, I like to be accurate with my description. So plant-based wasn't accurate enough. Previously, I was already eating a plant-based diet. So when I removed the animal protein sources, the term plant-based no longer applied as being totally accurate. So that doesn't seem to satisfy some of the militant vegans out there because of the six day cycle diet approach. And we'll get to that. But I always want to be as pinpoint accurate as I can because there's enough confusion and misinformation out there about these kind of labels. So even though I was already plant based or you could say lacto ovo vegetarian, uh, if you want to get into those kind of terms, kind of. Um, you know, it wasn't accurate enough once um, I took out all the um, animal protein sources. Um, vegan was the right word to use. So anything on that, buddy, you want to add there? Yeah, I, I like what Alan Watts had to say uh, about labels. And uh, he said you can't get wet from the word water. Basically, you you can call, call it whatever you want. It, it doesn't affect or change how you experience it. So um yeah you know, and people end up being more concerned with you know having a holier than thou attitude and and being able to you know place their beliefs on on someone else right like that, that's really what it becomes more about than a healthy sustainable lifestyle so and there's a fine line to that too like i i you know um if people are going to stand behind a healthy sustainable lifestyle in terms of a diet strategy then it's okay to you know, um, have your side and present it like, you know, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's never going to be a time where I'm going to be okay with keto. I'm just not, it's not ever going to happen because I have an informed, educated, accurate, academic, experienced opinion on the matter. But you don't but, go around the gym telling people, you know, you're not on like a crusade to, to, you know, right, get rid of keto right. and you don't go around telling people, you know, it's just, it's one I, of those I, things that you know. I will on my I will on my web page. I will on my yeah. Facebook page. I will in in these other areas. But you're uh, not knocking on someone's door. <laughs> I, I'd rather present as much as possible. You know, um, things to identify with and why. But that still doesn't have to mean someone how you accurately portray or don't portray. Anybody. I mean, imagine taking a census, folks. Can you imagine if you're if you're taking uh, a census for your government and one of the questions on there in terms of defining, you know, under under age, gender, uh, citizenship, you can imagine the next one being um, diet identity. Yeah. And you have to write <laughs> in like vegetarian, keto, omnivore. Uh, you know, oh. So this is where it gets kind of like silly and ridiculous, where I watch people online. Uh, especially on YouTube, talk past each other um, instead of um, talking with each other uh, and all those kind of things. So uh, it's really, really important that people understand why I stopped using the word plant-based in terms of describing, you know, my own approach and now Andy's approach and a few of the other approach and started using the term vegan because it ac accurately depicts the diet strategy that we are following. So it's that simple. It's other people that want to make it complicated when they start introducing the ism into it and the militant identity of it as well. So very important. So here's the breakdown of that.
And I'll get to your comments, Domino, and everybody else. I'm glad you're commenting. Just hang on, and for sure, we'll bring those comments into it. Uh, just let us uh, rant and rave a little bit here. So the breakdown of the switch in the labeling of the diet strategy is I take in food five times a day, and six days a week of that is no animal sources at all anymore. Uh, then, therefore, the diet itself is effectively a vegan diet diet. And like I said, in the textbook, Modern Nutrition and Health and Disease, uh, they don't define vegan in terms of uh, a personal identity. They define it as a composition of a diet that contains no animal products. Plain and simple. There needs to be no more emotional attachment to it than that. And that's what we're talking about here, the diet, not the defining nature of the person. Um, even, you know, as a separate comment, like Andy said about the Alan Watts quote, uh, I'm a hell of a lot more than any one single part of myself. Uh, and we offer the, the element of breaking vegan and talking about our diet strategy as going vegan um, because that describes the diet strategy that we now employ under the um, cycle diet umbrella and we'll get to that as well so we won't talk about that right now but just to continue and then i'll let you comment on this as well buddy but uh, for instance i wanted to use uh the neighborhood i grew up in as an example of you know uh the vegan diet that we're talking about uh versus veganism versus militant veganism so i grew up in a very blue collar neighborhood uh, in London, Ontario, Canada. And the neighborhood I grew up in was predominantly Greek. Most of the people were first or second generation uh, Greeks. Um, and I learned a lot of Greek slang and a lot of lear learned a little bit of Greek language. And a lot of the kids that I grew up with from age three, four, five, all the way to adulthood, we went to the same schools. We sang Oh Canada before school started. We played on the same hockey teams together. We played on the same uh, high school sports teams together. So why would I walk around and say, you're not as Canadian as I am? I'm more Canadian than you are because your parents are from Greece and mine aren't. Um, this is the kind of stuff we're talking about when you use those de kind of definitions of identity. So I really thought that would be a good um, kind of example to use. Militant vegans and their veganism are too often, they're losing more followers because of their all or nothing, how dare you call yourself a vegan approach, which kind of surprised me. I mean, people didn't even want to look into my background and look into all the books I've written um, that I might actually know a few things about this topic. Uh, they just wanted to run quick to the label that unless every single meal I take in seven days a week, 365 days a year falls into the vegan description, then how can I call myself vegan? And did I want to buy a Save the Animals t-shirt? Um, one of those things. So as like I said, as a nutritionist, weight loss, physique transformation specialist, I use the term vegan or whole food plant-based to define a diet strategy, not to define someone as a person, I would hope that there's more to people, even in this industry, uh, than hiding behind the label of a certain diet that they follow. Although I often wonder uh, when I'm online watching people that they have no identity outside of calling themselves something to do with uh, their physical appearance. So vegan is the more fitting description for my diet now because I'm not lacto-ovo or any other variations of vegetarian and I've completely removed animal sources from five meals a day, six days a week. That qualifies as vegan, not 100% uh, absolute, um, but this is where purism becomes a bad thing. Imagine if you grow up Let's, I'll, I'll use the same example in my neighborhood. Imagine I grew up with my best friend uh, for 15 years and he does those one of those online um, commercials, find out your DNA, and he pays to find out his DNA and finds out that his great-grandparents, his great-grandmother was of another race, uh, Asian or, you know, whatever. Um, then do I say, well, you're not really pure Caucasian anymore. So you're really not, you're not like me because you're not pure. So this is where, you know, these ideas, I'm using extreme examples to make a point because 
you're, you're going to be better off inviting people into a realm of understanding if you can explain it to them than you just start using inclusion versus exclusion uh, rather than explaining um, everything to people in that way. So comment on that, buddy, and then maybe we'll get to a few of these comments. The comments are great, by the way. So go yeah, ahead. I'm, I'm the same way, six days a week, uh, completely vegan. Seventh day, I, I have that option. Um, I haven't been lately on cheat days just because uh, I haven't felt like uh, any animal protein or animal products. Not that I've been purposely avoiding them. I just haven't haven't been craving them. So I'm just kind of riding that wave right now. And yeah, and yeah the, the cycle diet's all about inclusion. It, it's not exclusion. Anything good in life is always inclusion. It, it, as soon as you tell someone that they can't have something, um, I mean, it's just human nature before they, you know. Yeah, they... And I think uh, another part of that is um, another, I'm going to bring up some comments here. That's why I'm just uh, removing the PowerPoint for a second. But um, I think another element of that um, is the diet martyrs, the diet martyr, yeah. whether someone is keto, whether someone I is vegan, whether, yeah, like, uh, body. yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about what you can't have and it's all about your limitation yeah. and it's all about my family doesn't understand. It's like, no, you're the one that doesn't understand. Yeah. I say that in every single diet book I've ever written <laughs> is that if you become a diet martyr, then you completely don't get it and you have the wrong diet mentality uh, yeah. to, to sustain healthy weight loss for long term. So uh, that's very, very important. Let's get to some comments and I'm not done the PowerPoint yet, folks. So, but let's get to some comments. Um, Domino's just saying, uh, it is sad as it seems that more and more people are closed mind as soon as someone or something challenges their belief, uh, they close their mind to the possibility they might be wrong. Yeah, very. I mean, that's kind of like what we're getting at. When vegan becomes veganism, um, then you start creating a tribal uh, mentality and that serves nobody. So uh, Lydia's just saying, Pam Popper said a YouTube video today with regard to keto. When people on keto say that they feel good, great on keto doesn't mean that their body is doing better. And, you know, to comment and expand upon that, Lydia, let's not rule out the honeymoon period of people yeah. who, you know, or the Atkins sort of uh, mind print self-fulfilling prophecy where Atkins said ridiculously in his book, keto is as good as a bright sunny day and as good as sex. Yeah. People um, feel I'm, pretty good on heroin and cocaine when they first use it too, but doesn't mean it's going to be uh, yeah. a and, viable uh, option long term, right? So, And someone just sent me today um, – um, some talks going on. Oh, shoot, I can't remember. Um, I think it's a diabetes, something to do with diabetes. And they were taking people off keto and immediately putting them on like um, 60, 70 percent carb uh, vegan diets. And th their whole blood panels improved from the get go, right from the beginning. And we're going to get yeah. into that as well. So um, thanks for sharing that, Lady. And then Jared's just saying fourth day on breaking vegan diet and loving it. Uh, not on a crusade to brag to people around me about it and pounding my chest. Burgers and pepperoni pizza are still on the menu if I feel like it on a reef feed day. Yeah, good. Uh, Jared's a former client of mine who uh, uh, wrote me to help uh, him break vegan, and we did that. And, uh, you know, I can go testimonials all day long. To First, I think I was shocked at the amount of people that wanted to follow us who who wrote and said, you know, can we go vegan now? Can You know, can you write me a vegan diet? And just so people know, as much as I did that with some clients, I refused to do it with others. Other clients were just finally getting their metabolism optimized and settled into a level of consistency and compliance. The last thing I wanted to do was throw a wrench into that. So some of them actually said, I want to go plant-based and vegan too. And I said, not yet, not, not right yet. So um, that's one of the things uh, people uh, seem to forget. They think that... Uh, we have no gray area in what we do. Like uh, we're vegan now, so everyone should be vegan now. Now I am presenting the case for that in my Facebook posts at least once a day, and people can follow that if they like. But that's a whole different thing than than you know arm wrestling over uh, getting someone to you know our way or the highway kind of thing. That's just not the approach we're going to use. So good point there, Jed. Um, and then Andrea, a client of mine, is just saying vegetarian diet's great. Um, even now with the Greek Easter, um, 
So you just see the, the way that the, the vegan diet is, um, well, he does say a vegan diet might not work for you as an individual. Yes, it will. I mean, that, that has been pretty much debunked. Um, that's the, if there is a one size fits all diet out there for health, well-being and weight control, it's the vegan diet. The research is overwhelming about that. The people that claim that a vegan diet doesn't work for them are obviously not uh, applying it in a healthy way or a correct way. Um, and don't forget, I mean, Andy and I talk about this all the time and you can comment on this, buddy. But uh, I ran into someone I was sharing it with you uh, the other day who um this is the problem with the diet mentality, folks, and being a diet martyr. Someone who was actually weighing their lettuce and their cucumbers at their <laughs> meal times. This is hugely dangerous ground yeah. for a really messed up head when it comes to having a sound, healthy relationship with food every, ever again. You're weighing lettuce? Nice. That's like weighing the air you breathe. Go ahead, buddy. Have a comment on that. Yeah, I, I actually had a, a an ex female, uh, an ex competitor, uh, a female, actually tell me that she was during her prep weighing lettuce, um, like a whole head of lettuce, probably has thirty calories, like like a thirty, fifty head 60. of lettuce. Like there's no need yeah. to weigh it. Like it's like it weighing water or something. Like it's mostly water. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, uh, N but Nancy, yeah, that's you, yeah, you can so, see how how that wouldn't lead to a very good place. Um, no, you know. and I think that's part of the problem when people want to buy into an identity, a nutritional identity yeah. of any kind. Um, that's where the danger ground. Goes. And Nancy's just saying she eats vegan for breakfast now, and that's a start. That's absolutely a start. No problem with that at all. So um, let's bring back the um, let's bring back the lecture, and then I will. Um, you know, we'll get back to your comments. Good comments, folks. Keep them coming. Um, you know, so, yeah, that was the old neighborhood example. I thought that would make a good example to show how ludicrous it is to, you know, to, to tell someone you're just not vegan enough to be a member of our group. You know, you're just not Canadian enough because your parents are Greek. Um, you know, just that yeah. makes... That makes no sense, um, and I hopefully that example will ring true with some people, and they'll yeah, see that, just, that just how ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, I mean, I was I, I started out calling it, uh, you know, uh, I was trying to be nice uh, yeah. to catch more flies with honey than with crap um, by by labeling the title of this webinar whole food well, plant based. It's, it's or, the same mindset. Like, I mean, look at look at the the Nazis and the the Aryan I was race. Just, I mean, that, that's what. I was just going to say, I was going to, I was going to call it instead of militant veganism, I was going to yeah. call it whole food plant-based or Nazi vegans. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, some of the ones that have approached me have been truly Nazi about it. Oh, um, and and I, won't, I won't get into the comments because they're absolutely uninformed, uneducated, and a bit ridiculous. Um, but again, it gets back to that. You're just not vegan enough to be a member of yeah. our group. You know, we're capital V vegans. You're just a little V vegan and, uh, you know, get out of our headspace kind of thing. We, we know the score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll get to your comments again. Like, keep commenting, folks. This is great. I just want to finish uh, this up, the PowerPoint. Um, so the cycle diet and metabolism. Here's the thing. Even though breaking vegan, I've gone vegan. Andy's my protege. He's gone vegan. The cycle diet will always come first. Why? Because it's a metabolism first approach. It's a diet lifestyle first approach. Uh, it's about the refeed and why it's important for many reasons. It's about living in the real world of food abundance. And that includes that seventh day off of the vegan strategy on a refeed, if you so desire. Now, in you know, uh, full disclosure, since breaking vegan, I haven't so desired. Uh, all my cheat days have still been vegan and not because I have to and not because of a limitation mindset of I can never have that again. The thought right now just doesn't appeal to me when I'm shopping for my cheat day items. It just right now is off my radar screen. I would rather have my cheat day be filled with um, other items, you know, and we're going to get to that as well. So um, very, very important. But facts are facts. So. Uh, you really can make yourself and the planet healthier one meal at a time, okay? So um, that's an important, important thing. Uh, just like Nancy just said about, about her diet, you know, she's starting off with uh, her breakfast being vegan. 
if you want to get into this for the, the, the health of the planet, the health of your body, isn't it ironic? Isn't it non-coincidental how these two things go together? But you can make yourself and the planet healthier one meal at a time. So more is lost than is gained with this all or nothing mindset of absolutes of seven days, everything, uh, every meal vegan or else. Uh, or else you're not a member of our special club. Um, I don't want to be a member of a special club where people have to wear T-shirts who define who they are as a human being by the food they eat. Um, I would hope that people are a little bit deeper than the baths they take. But whole food plant-based is proven to be healthier in almost every single health indicator that matters, including weight control. Vegan, going vegan, is just a step deeper into the whole food plant-based it's just stepping deeper into that element but look if in your mind vegan is a sacrifice because a lot of people have written me oh i'm not sure I, I think i want to then you don't do it that is not how andy and i arrived at going completely vegan on diet days this wasn't about Hey, buddy, I think we need to surrender our plant foods. Uh, you know, I think we need to limit how we eat. So that's a real important thing. And, and I'm taking over the conversation. So I'll let you get a comment or two in there, buddy. Oh, did I lose you? Oh, I think, I'll, I think we lost Andy. We'll wait and uh, we'll see if we can get him back. There he is. So uh, lost you there for a second and that happens with uh with this software so yeah i was just uh, gonna say too i, I was gonna make a point about some of these vegans that are that are so hardcore and, and uh they they end up getting into all these vegan faux foods too and i mean if <laughs> those are those are probably worse than, than a lot of other uh and, and i mean processed foods right so i mean it, 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 they're no healthier than than actual hot dogs so well, yeah, if you want to get extremely, yeah, you know, like, but they'd be better I, I, off having more, you know, more variety, right? So, and know, I would still say, as much as the idea of vegan cheese and stuff doesn't appeal to me right now, you know, we're still pretty new on that on that curve. So maybe somewhere yeah. down the road, this is the thing about the cycle diet first, and the, and the thing about options is you don't necessarily rule it out. You just say not right yeah. now. I'm, I'm not ruling it out, but I, I just find that they feel like you get the real hardcore vegans that, you know, it's all or nothing, right? So it's either eat these, you know, field roast sausages or, you know, or nothing, right? So it's. Yeah. And, and we can, we can get into that for sure. Yeah. So um, let's, let's just, so one of the common questions we're getting, and I, I'll get into them all at separate times. You know, where do you get your protein from? I can't believe that's still a question in our day and age. I mean, this was a question about vegetarian diets back in the 80s. Um, you know, so unless you're also toting around a three foot size cell phone, um, I would assume that, you you know, you've progressed along with technology since then. There's a reason you don't hear anything about kwashiorkor anymore. Um, kwashiorkor is a form of malnutrition caused by protein deficiency in the diet, typically affecting young children in areas of extreme famine. That has pretty much been eliminated around the globe uh, with a few pockets of exceptions. But you don't hear that term. You don't hear vegans and the risk of kwashiorkor. Uh, you know, it just doesn't happen. Or the other protein uh, deficiency um, disease was marasmus, but that has to do with lack of calories uh, and protein combined. Kwashiorkor is the lack of protein regardless of um, calorie equations. So protein deficiency is just been completely eliminated and it's actually too much protein that's a problem health wise uh, with inflammation and things like that and I got lots of lectures uh, coming up uh, on those kind of topics so I just actually, included uh, Go ahead. I had a guy I had a guy at the gym this morning I, I told him I, I've been uh, eating vegan for about six weeks now and, and the first thing he asked me is uh, where's my protein coming from so you see, and, so, and it, yeah, just the mentality, right? Like the, the general mentality of, of the gym population, you know, oh, where's, and, where's your protein coming from? So, and we don't mind being the ones to educate people. No, 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 no. Don't I don't uh, know no, any better. Not, um, you know, we don't mind that. Uh, here's one study from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, uh, May 1994. 
Um, plant protein foods contribute approximately 65% of the per capita supply of protein on a worldwide basis and approximately 32% in North American region. These sources of protein are discussed in relation to their amino acid content, human amino acid requirements, and dietary protein quality. Here's the, here's the gist, here's the slam, here's the, here's the home run. Mixtures of plant proteins can serve as a complete and well-balanced source of protein, uh, source of amino acids for meeting human physiological requirements. Now I could have listed another eight, nine, 10 studies there, but um, that's a jumping off point. And that's from way back, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in 1994. So did you wanna add something to that? Uh, you looked like you were, no, we're good. Uh, no, no, we're good. So now a lot of the things when we get questions as well, I want to get to Belinda's comments and other comments as well here. Um, people don't realize that even among omnivores, most people get the micronutrients they need from fortified foods, even amongst omnivores. Now I had another five slides going into all that about iron and, and the rest of it. And I just thought, no, it's getting way too academic. So I removed it. But here's a personal example of, I used, um, Vanilla flavored almond milk, uh, sweetened, because it's I use it on cheat day only. All right, now if you look at the side panel here, one cup, okay, one cup has 30% of your calcium, 45% of your vitamin D, and 50% of your B12 that people are so worried about not getting. I have at least a liter and a half of that on a cheat day, at least. With a bag of cookies alone, I probably down a quart of that. With my Lucky Charms a couple of weeks ago, I was definitely like made a dent in that. And you have to realize things like calcium, they're stored. So if I'm having like five cups of that, that's well over 100% and then that gets stored. Things like vitamin D, you don't need the supplementation. The B12 takes years and years to deplete your body. You would only turn vegan, you wouldn't even have to look at your B12 uh, in, in your body for five or six years after going vegan, even if you weren't doing it right. But even having said that, the people that I'm watching who are arguing the vegan lifestyle don't seem to understand uh, elements of nutrition and biochemistry about retention and absorption of nutrients. Your body being the amazing computer it is, if you're short in one micronutrient and your body takes it in, it absorbs and retains more of it. If you're taking in too much of a certain uh, micronutrient, your body will excrete it in the urine. That's why that, you know, we've always said from the get go that taking multivitamins is just a way to pay for really expensive urine. So when you're looking at this, fortified foods, whether you're an omnivore or a vegan, most people get key micronutrients from fortified foods, whether they realize it or not. So as a vegan, I just start looking for them. It's not really a big deal. Like, so on a cheat day, like I said, this is only one cup of the fortified food. And I have five, at least five times that. So I'm meeting a lot of the micronutrient needs that omnivores aren't even getting uh, by paying attention to that diet and the fortified nature of it on a cheat day, not to mention it's, uh, you know, easily digestible and things like that. So go ahead, buddy, make a comment. Yeah, I, I get that question quite a bit too about B12. Um, B12 has a half life in your body of, of over a year. So I mean, Cheat days take care of, of pretty much everything uh, uh, nutritionally. I, I haven't had a multivitamin in, I don't know, like a decade probably. Um, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's so. just, it, it, it's a non-issue. I, I mean, those are the main, the main arguments usually, you know, that people bring up is about protein, vitamin B12, and, and iron. But uh, And iron, I mean, I just posted this is just the other day that actually um, – you know, looking at vegan blood work had uh, more available bioavailable iron than it than did meat eaters. Yeah. Um, and I posted that the other day on Facebook as well. But yeah. this is what I didn't want to get into other than uh, other than just pointing it out uh, that you don't really have to go far out of your way, especially no. if you're on the six day vegan plan, which is the next slide. So. Um, again, just to reiterate some of the stuff we've talked about, no diet mindset should be based on limitations and what you can't have. All diet strategies should be based on choice and inclusion. And that was true even before we went vegan and we were just plant-based, we were still looking at it as choices that we wanted to make. So there should be no absolutes. 
in terms of no, never again. Never again am I going to have cottage cheese. Never again am I going to have a, a donut with a cream filling. Uh, it's just yeah. not a way, a healthy mindset to have uh, when you're living in a world of food abundance. And that's where most people end up with food and eating issues when they start this absolute mindset of good me, bad me, right me, wrong me, um, you know, black and white thinking, um, which is not realistic. So also on the six day vegan diet, it's easy to meet your nutritional needs. It's easier to mentally negotiate if you need to. Like the slide I just showed with the fortified um, almond milk. It's much easier to meet your nutritional needs if you have one day. One day in seven, you're still contributing to the planet. You're still contributing to the health of your body. You're still contributing to your metabolism. You're still contributing to all your nutrition needs. And now you've got an insurance day just to recognize that. So that's very important. So, And there's so many other advantages versus disadvantages rather than just seeking the purity of the vegan label and if people aren't online, they're not happy that I'm not a capital B vegan because, you know, I don't use the right household cleaning products and I don't wear the right T-shirts. That's fine with me because as an expert, what I'm trying to impart to you is the advantages and describing the diet strategy we follow and why we follow it, um, not to define who we are as human beings. So, you know, uh, that would be um, completely divergent from what we do and why we do it. So that's very important. Now I wanted to give some examples. Andy and I were out at Earl's on Top. Shout out to Earl's on Top on the weekend. Uh, amazing place with an amazing view. So here's some shots of the menu. So, you know, this is just in the appetizers. There's um, three choices that I could have right there. Um, you know, that would be on a cheat day, um, and you can see the V there for uh, vegetarian. Uh, somebody's going to argue, well, that's got a Parmesan dip. Well, you can remove that. I had the Italian style pan bread, um, and that was awesome. Um, and that's because that's what I wanted. And then uh, from the main, you see the Southwest vegetarian burger. Um, it was brown rice, mushroom, vegetarian patty, guacamole. I had them remove the aged cheddar. I didn't want it. Um, and it was fantastic. How much was I bragging about that, buddy? I should have had two oh, of them. Really. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you said that. Yeah, should have got two. It was it was freaking amazing. Now, when we go out on Sundays, I have to remind you, Andy comes out with me and basically humors me because his metabolism is in the prime of his life, and I remember those days. So he comes out and has a few wobbly pops with me, and he drives so that I can uh, imbibe a little more. But uh, he waits till he gets home. But this is what he had. Uh, while he was just sort of humoring me along through my meal. So this was the Power Bowl at Earl's, which was, do you even remember? What was There's beets, the avocado, obviously. Was, uh, roasted squash, chickpeas, beets, uh, yeah, avocado, quinoa, um, some sort so of it, greens there. Uh, it, it, it was really been. good. It had, it had it, a dressing on it too. And it could have been a diet meal as well. I mean, you were yeah, saying, yeah. right? Like if you wanted to mimic that on a diet day, you could. Yeah. But I mean – the, because of the fact that we had a few beers beforehand, uh, yeah, not included, not, not not in the picture, folks. Um, you know that that made it a cheat day. But that's Andy humoring me because then he goes home and he makes stuff for himself. So this is Andy's homemade vegetarian pizza with no cheese. He actually made two of them. I didn't include both pictures because yeah. you know why. But and and this was based on the fact that when we were at Boston Pizza in one of our first early cheat days. That was the first time Andy had had a pizza with no cheese, and you loved it. Oh, it was amazing. I, I never would have thought I, I would ever get pizza without cheese, but um, as soon as I tried it, I was like, oh, man, this is this is flavor city. I mean, this it yeah. was amazing. Which, and what I wanted to explain about that is when I, you know, before I even went vegan, I would often, if I was ordering pizza on a cheat day, I would actually order double sauce, no cheese, because I always felt that uh, especially, you know, uh, the cheap uh, chain places where you order pizza, that their cheese tasted rubbery to me even when I was eating it. So I would always go no cheese, double sauce anyway. Um, so for me, it wasn't really a stretch. And then Andy made this for himself, homemade cinnamon streusel dessert pizza. This is what two single guys do. They send each other pictures of food because they, you know. <laughs> but exactly. this is what Andy did on his cheat day. So he had that power bowl at Earl's, then he went home had two pizzas and then he had this third uh, 
pizza on pizza dough, pizza crust that you bought at the grocery store, right? The ready to go. Yeah, pizza from the crust. superstore. Yeah, President's Choice ready ready made pizza crust. So yeah, basically ate three three whole pizzas at once. So three yeah, and, like, full, three twelve inch pizza crusts. What is all on this that that they may not know? Cinnamon streusel. Uh, yeah, cinnamon streusel topping, which is oats, flour. Um, I use margarine. Uh, it, it is actually vegan. That's like faux cream cheese frosting on top too. So, um, all right, good. And that's was, just an example. Yeah. So that's you know that's a cheat day with the always the option. So the relevant points we want to get across here, and then I'll get back to your comments. Some good comments coming in. Um, because the diet strategy is based on inclusion, not exclusion. So people who say, I don't know, it's quite a sacrifice to go vegan, then don't go vegan. That's our first absolute point. Yeah. If you think in your mind that that's a sacrifice, then you're getting it wrong. Our switch to vegan was a transition, not an overhaul. It was a tweak. We were already whole food plant-based. This wasn't like putting our diet upside down and inside out and oh my God. It wasn't like that. So it was a transition, not an overhaul. And getting back to the first point in the slide here, when you have a mindset based on inclusion and not exclusion, over time, what we just showed you in the slides, what I wanted to get at, is you end up looking for more of what you're enjoying. You're not seeing it as have to, but as want to. And that's why I made the point where Andy started making himself his own pizzas without cheese because he tried mine and it was awesome. So it wasn't like, can't have cheese. It was like, no, don't want cheese. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there's a big difference in mindset. Trust me, folks, for someone who's dealt for decades with uh, people with eating disorders and food issues, this should not be underestimated. And it's why I also said that cycle diet comes first before veganism. So, or I won't, sorry, that's a bad word to me, veganism. Before our choice to go vegan, it's still with, under the umbrella of the cycle diet. So we can still have meat and dairy on day seven. It's still an inclusive option. It's just that for right now, we're choosing not to, mostly because right now it's just not that appealing and we're enjoying what we're doing. And it's kind of like a, a treasure hunt of finding a whole, I'm finding whole new sections of the grocery store I'm standing at where I used to just walk by uh, and it's fun. So yeah, absolutely. And like I said, after Andy tried my cheeseless veggie pizza, that's how he wanted his own. It wasn't that he couldn't have cheese. It was like he, he wanted, you know, the double sauce cheese. So that's really, really important. And what I really wanted to get at in this lecture uh, was the difference between whole food, plant-based diet, vegan diet as a description of a diet strategy and not as a defining element of who you are as a human being. Like I said, it's not like Andy and I are skipping through the garden, hugging trees. Um, you know, maybe Andy does that in private, but he doesn't do it with me. So um, very, very important stuff. So uh, let's get back to the comments. Great comments, folks. So let's get to them. Um, I think I missed Ange was just saying uh, the last eight weeks of going vegan to see if it helps with her eating and getting to her meal breaks without crashing, lasting longer, stretching her meals out. Um, and then, of course, that has to do with uh, actual composition of each meal. So we can get into that at another time. Uh, my client, Max, is just saying it's no surprise uh, people wanted to follow you guys. You spread the real information. I asked uh, you to have the vegan diet, but you refuse, which is okay. One day, I'll hopefully be able to go vegan six days a week. And it's not that I refuse, Max. Um, I think I just said for where you are at, you need to ride the wave. Uh, that's an ableism term that we use a lot, folks, is we call it riding the wave. You establish yourself in the water, you create the wave, and then you ride that wave on, like you're on a surfboard. And Max is young. He's new to the game he yeah. wants to do something with it. I've got his metabolism optimized. I've got him following a diet consistently. I didn't want to throw a wrench into that. So it wasn't, you know, like I refused. Um, I just said, not right now. So that's very important. And then Belinda, this is the one I wanted to get to. Uh, Belinda's just saying, are you writing a book on how to break vegan and the health benefits of it? I absolutely am <laughs> doing that, Belinda. First, I'm finishing up my uh, food and eating issues project uh, for women, which I've been doing since late last year. And I'm getting 
near the end now, which is good because I'm tired of it. Um, so I want to get to this, but this is going to be more like this. Uh, I actually, you know, share with you guys. I bought a uh, six day vegan diet dot com um, um, domain. And that's what it's going to be, six-day vegan diet. People always ask me, will I do it? And will I put the ABLE imprint on it? That is the ABLE imprint, that it's a six-day approach. That rules out anyone trying to fit a square peg in a round hole of not knowing if it's really for you ever again to not eat this, that, or the other thing. So uh, very, very important as well. Lydia is asking, are you two aware of the new movie, The Game Changer? It's not out yet, but as soon as it hits there, anticipate many people explore and adopt whole food plant-based. There's YouTube videos. Um, cool. Uh, the more I think. I, um, here's the thing I also want to say. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, uh, Lydia. But one of the things I wanted to say, and I've said this my whole career, is I will go on the side of the truth and where that leads me. If that makes me against the Vogue trends and I, I'm attacked for it, that's fine. Andy's been a client of mine long enough to see me through all that. When I first started um, advocating high sodium diets for people, I was attacked because that was right in the heart of the low sodium movement. Um, when I went against low carbs. Um, now I seem to be part of a Vogue trend that's popular. None of that interests me. I don't care if I'm going against the grain. There's been many things I've written about that took research 25 years to catch up to me about uh, in terms of refeed days, cheat days, in terms of metabolism first, in terms of metabolic damage, in terms of sodium, and now, of course, in terms of the low-carb, high-fat diet coming around, uh, something I've been advocating from the get-go. So Ian's just saying, hey, coach, Andy, and viewers, I work in an office where the women are overweight apart from one woman who is vegetarian. Hmm. The overweight women eat tiny portions for lunch, yet the vegetarian has way bigger portions and no weight issues. Uh, good point, Ian. You know, as I have another couple people writing me, and, and it breaks my heart, but we have this whole tribalism, follow the leader kind of mindset where um, there's a couple people writing me, their whole office has gone keto. Like, <laughs> don't have a mind of your own? So. <laughs> All I said to these people was, okay, monitor the honeymoon period. Watch what happens over the next three, four, five, six months. Watch the little excuses start to enter into the equation. Watch the people hiding, start hiding and not eating in the public, and you'll see how that unfolds over the course of a year. Like I said, the new um, online, I think it's online, um, uh, discussion about um, – diabetes, they're taking people off keto and immediately putting them on 70, 80% high carb diet uh, and watching their blood panels improve pretty much immediately. So uh, that's a, you know, an issue for another day. So Will's just saying I'm 33 years old. My parents raised me as a vegan until I was about 15. Then uh, I by choice added eggs and cheese here and there, mostly on weekend breakfast or something with friends. I was discussing this with a Nazi vegan recently who had been vegan for about five months. And they basically tried to tell me how unhealthy I've been my whole life since I incorporate eggs and dairy occasionally when I feel like it. 33 years as a vegan, part-time vegetarian, um, being being pooped on by a vegan of five months. I love the idea of whole food plant-based as a way of describing rather than vegan. Great point, Will. And what I'm saying is I had to abandon the whole food plant-based uh, as a leader in this industry for describing what I do and what I advocate because it no longer was definitive enough. So I had to make the point about breaking vegan uh, for myself, for Andy, and the six-day vegan approach. And um, it's the same, you know, Will, I, I get this from, you know, what you're saying about, you know, you've been eating this way your whole life more or less, and then someone who's been around it for five months is going to tell you what's up. I get the same thing with training. Four-plus decades as an expert, I've written, what, almost 20 books. I've appeared all over the world at gyms and universities lecturing, and I get someone who's been around for all of 10 minutes telling me how my exercise form is bad on a video I posted or how I'm wrong about keto and, you know, all the rest of it. So it's just, uh, you know, it's ridiculous. So Andrea is just saying Scott's decades ahead of the research when it comes to understanding metabolism. Appreciate that. Um the calorie fundies get bad uh, as the math don't add up with insane calorie spikes. Yeah, having John Paul 
that picture of John Paul eating that waffle challenge and being as lean as he is, or Andy, the stuff we have Andy doing on video. Um, yeah, pretty, you know, pretty insane that the calories don't, calorie math just doesn't work. That's another thing I was ahead of way back when, when I first started talking about that, people told me I didn't know what I was talking about and I should do my homework and all the rest of it. And that's finally come around. Uh, Domino's just saying, just finished the cycle diet book. Love how it works with any type of diet strategy. That's the whole point, even, even of this webinar. I uh, plan on adjusting my diet strategy to a cycle diet lifestyle. Just make sure, Domino, if you're going to do that, it's not just about the cheat day. It's about super compensation mode that must be established. You know, people love the idea of have your cake and eat it too. And then they sort of brush aside uh, the metabolic context within which that works. So that's very, very important as well. So Lydia's just saying she's hearing a lot about diet phasing these days. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds like more internet nonsense to me. Have you heard of it, Andy? No, never. And I think, Lydia, the reason we hear, we don't hear about this is we actually read studies. We actually follow people who present academic work. I have a feeling diet phasing is going to be something you saw on a website or a social media platform and not on any kind of academic uh, research foundation. So um, Perry's just asking, are the vegans upset about the ecological impact of almond growing in California? We won't even get into that stuff, Perry. I'm not even, that's not what, I don't even want to cover that. I'm doing this as a nutritionist. Uh, I'm not doing this as a worldview. Um, so uh, you know, I just, I just want to keep that, um, keep that separate for now. So, um, and then Andre is just, uh, posting, a um, part of a study that he just sent me a couple hours ago, a study with 81,000 people finds that, uh, meat proteins associated with a higher risk of heart disease and the protein of nuts and seeds is associated with benefits for heart health. Uh, and there's more than one study on that. Um, so it's not just the content and type of fat that matters, but the type of protein. Um, and there's all kinds of studies that dictate that. So um, David's just saying, hey, Scott, I'm thinking of doing the cycle diet, personal trainer, plus I'm 51, platinum club member, thumbs up. Way to go, David. Um, also thinking of uh, introducing vegan into my diet as a chronic kidney disease. Absolutely. I just finished a whole section of future Facebook posts on uh, kidney function and protein. David, uh, the research, again, pretty overwhelming. As a matter of fact, one of the standard medical interventions for people with kidney issues is, guess what? It's not a pharmaceutical intervention. It's a whole food plant-based intervention, believe it or not. I just finished a whole section on that. Actually, I was going to do a webinar on it, but I didn't think there would be enough interest in that kind of, um, you know, uh, specific problem. So I might go back and look at that, but the research is also overwhelming. Good, good. Uh, thank you for that comment, David. Very good to know. Catherine saying vegan isn't, isn't an easy diet to follow. Did it myself for a couple of years. Have to pay attention. I'm not prepared to put the effort, attention, energy into this. I'd rather eat as healthy as I can with a diet that includes meat and fish. That's your choice, but I would disagree with you, Catherine, that it's hard to follow. I, I, I yeah, think I find it easier, actually. actually. Than, than it's it's way easier in terms of preparation. Yeah. It's way easier in terms of, of – um, of uh, taking with you, uh, it's just it's just easier on all kinds of fronts. But again, yeah. mindset, uh, it's all about mindset. If you think something's difficult, it's going to be difficult. If you think something is uh, a worthy challenge, it's going to feel like a worthy challenge. But um, I know you cook, Andy, and you walk around your house oh. with your apron on and nothing underneath. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah. I mean, it's it's way easier now that you know I'm not cooking chicken yeah. and, and egg whites and and I and, and I don't cook. Kind of stuff and, on a I don't cook. And as someone who doesn't cook, maybe because I'm a nutritionist, I don't find, I don't find this hard to follow at all and get all my nutrient no. needs. I find it quite, quite easy, especially with the six day approach. So, um, so I disagree with you on that, Catherine, but you know, to each their own. Um, if you did the research, the way, the extent that I've done, um, eating as healthy as you can, uh, would actually exclude meat, uh, and fish. But I mean, if you want to do that as healthy as you can with those things, that's cool too. I mean, my, my, um, my blood tests were healthy before I switched it. You know, that's another question I got that I should mention here. People were writing me saying, 
did you have some health problems? Did you, you know, is that why you went vegan? Like there was, a, was there some issues? Like was your cholesterol? High? No, my blood panels were fine, but they're even better now, but they were fine before. But because before all I had was no saturated fat, it was, you know, just egg whites, albacore tuna packed in water yeah. and uh, skinless, boneless chicken. So uh, I already was eliminating saturated fats, cholesterol, et cetera. Rick's just saying, been following your cycle diet now for 20 weeks. People can't believe I eat so much on a cheat day and stay lean. In fact, I keep getting leaner. Yep, it's all about metabolism, Rick. Yep, for sure. Can't believe how many people don't want to employ such an amazing diet protocol. It's changed my life. Well, we sure are happy to hear that. Uh, welcome aboard the, the diet uh, cycle diet train. Uh, we're happy to hear that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to live. It fits living in a world of food abundance. It's fun. It changes all the time. Um, so, yeah, very – Andy, go ahead, comment. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been doing it going on 13 years now. So, I mean, I, I'm never going to eat any other way for the rest of my life. I can pretty much tell you that. Like, it, it's just, it works so well. And it's it's all about inclusion, not exclusion. There's no need to, you know, to, to eat another way. I mean, this is, it's got everything. And it's obviously sustainable because I've been doing it for, you know, going on 13 years. And it works. I stay lean. It, it's not you know, difficult. I, I've never like, oh man, I can't, I can't wait till Sunday or, you know, I'm never struggling or I've never feel deprived. So. I, and that's what, you know, that's about that, as good as it gets. That goes back to, you know, what we were saying earlier. And that is that, you know, cycle diet first, metabolism yeah. first, yeah. the cycle diet lifestyle first within that the diet strategy is now vegan. Whereas before it, it was more, um, it was more whole food plant-based uh, with animal products. So people need to understand that. Uh, so yes, people are writing me, you know, um, you know, am I going to uh, do a book? Uh, yes, I am. I'm going to do a book on this. I didn't think it was worthy of a book, but I get so many emails now and then so many comments uh, along the lines of uh, Catherine's below that it's hard to follow. I'm, I, I, don't understand that logic. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with for Catherine. Maybe for her it was, but I I've never had an easier. Yeah, I mean, it's, no, just, I, it's just easy. I agree it's with that just, too. I'm not, we're not saying you're wrong, but you're at liberty to hold that opinion. But yeah, I, I definitely don't agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's our, that's our approach. Now we're way past our hour time folks. I'd like to keep doing the uh, comments. Uh, John Paul's um, super trainer, John Paul, just join us just to make that little easy peasy comment. So I thought I would include it. Um, so yes, folks, um, hopefully you've benefited from this. Um, we appreciate you being on board. I uh, can't do any more comments cause we're way past our time. So uh, thanks for coming up and um, hopefully you benefited from this. If so, uh, you should have been hitting the share button all along. Hopefully you will. Uh, you can rewatch this later on Facebook. I'm sure Andy will share it on his uh, social media pages. And of course, by tomorrow I will post this on my YouTube channel as well. So check out the YouTube channel as well uh, if you want to see past episodes, etc. And stay tuned next week. It's going to be all about the aerobic myth. So uh, hopefully um, you will uh, stay Good tuned. Um, and Perry is just posting, folks, just a final. Here's some terrific free content. Anyone you might know with food or eating issues. Uh, as I said, I'm working on that course right now, just trying to finalize it for for uh, ready to go. So um, that's it for us, folks. Stick a fork in us because we're done. Um, thanks, Andy, for being there as always, buddy. Thank and you for uh, me. glad you could contribute. And I'll probably see you next week. And then the week after that, folks, I have a real special, uh, special uh, one that I'm presenting. Uh, um, and I'll just leave it at that, but mostly for the ladies. And I hope you'll tune in. I'll announce that next week. But so, any of you people out there who know people who go to the gym and they, they head right to the cardio equipment or uh, spend a lot of time on the cardio equipment, next week is for them. So hit them up, get them to tune in and share. We're going to be all about the aerobic myth for next week's episode, and I hope you'll tune in then. Hope you'll hit your share button. Um, good to have you here. If you weren't here, it wouldn't make much sense for us for being here either. So we'll, we'll see you next time.